Good morning from St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School in San Antonio, Texas, and welcome to morning prayer for the morning of Friday, December the 1st. Today is the fifth section of the prayers of the people. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. In the Anglican Communion today, we're praying for the Diocese of Bangor and the Church of Wales. And in our own diocese this week, as well as for dioceses all over the world, we're praying for clergy, spouses, and families. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for David and David, our bishops, and for Mike and Allie, our priests. And as always, from wherever you are, please bring your own concerns, intentions, and thanksgivings to prayer this morning. We're super fortunate that we can sit outside for a, a while. It's been uncharacteristically um, overcast and dark and drizzly um, and cold, which it isn't usually this time of year. So we are happy to be outside for a while and the sun is shining. So let's get started on page 78. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. On page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. And on page 82, let's say the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. We have a couple of psalms today. We have Psalm 140 and Psalm 142, and that begins on page 796. Deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violent, who devise evil in their hearts and stir up strife all day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent, who are determined to trip me up. The proud have hidden a snare for me and stretched out a net of cords. They have set traps for me along the path. I have said to the Lord, you are my God. Listen, O Lord, to my supplication. O Lord God, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the desires of the wicked, O Lord, nor let their evil plans prosper. Let not those who surround me lift up their heads. Let the evil of their lips overwhelm them. Let hot burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the mire, never to rise up again. A slanderer shall not be established on the earth, and evil shall hunt down the lawless. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the poor and render justice to the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name, and the upright shall continue in your sight. I cry to the Lord with my voice. To the Lord I make loud supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him all my trouble. When my spirit languishes within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I look to my right hand, 
and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to, and no one cares for me. I cry out to you, O Lord. I say you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry for help, for I have been brought very low. Save me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, the righteous will gather around me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's go to our readings. As I said earlier this week, we're skipping around. And so today we're going to skip over to Paul's letter to the Romans. Actually, we're towards the end of it. Um, and we're going to read from chapter 15, verses 7 through 13. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again, he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle for today is the second song of Isaiah on page 86. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Somebody singing over there. And in our gospel reading for today, we're leaving um, the gospel of St. Matthew, and again, we're skipping around. And so we're going to read in St. Luke today. Um, let's see, we're in chapter 19. We're going to begin with verse 28 and go through verse 40. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. And then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second canticle for today is on page 93, the Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. 
And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. On page 96, let's say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let's say Suffrages A on page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And our collect for today is the collect for proper 29 on page 236. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And on page 99, the Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And on page 100, our prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your Holy Church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And on the top of page 102, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for our, uh, our moment of reflection, I'd like to take you back to Israel um, and to where the story in St. Luke took place. Um, Bethany and Bethphage are actually on the other side of the Mount of Olives from, from Jerusalem. And so it was, was not uncommon if you were going to Jerusalem and it was super crowded that, and you had friends, which Jesus did, you would stay in Bethany or, or Bethphage someplace there because it was not that far a walk from there into Jerusalem. Um, you know, you could, you could do it, you know, not, it wouldn't take you too long to do it. I will tell you one thing about the Mount of Olives, um, and as I was reading, I was paying very close attention, and it actually doesn't say that Jesus rode the colt down with, you know, everyone throwing their cloaks in front of him. Uh, that is one of the steepest hills I think I have ever walked down in my life. 
And I had just this vision as I was walking down that hill because I was afraid I was going to slip and go just rolling down that hill. Um, that I was afraid, I was just kind of imagining Jesus on the colt with everybody throwing their cloaks in front of him. And that poor colt, I'm like, he must have slid all the way down that hill. Um, but then when I got to reading it, it's like, you know something, he never actually said. I mean, Jesus might have gotten off the colt before it started down that hill. Uh, but it is a very steep hill. And I would like to take you to the Mount of Olives today. Um, as I say, it's a very steep hill. It overlooks Jerusalem, and uh, you can get a beautiful view of the skyline of Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. Much of the Mount of Olives are tombs. There is a large cemetery, huge cemetery there that's Jewish, and then there is also a large cemetery there that, that's Muslim. But um, so yeah, there, there are a lot of tombs. I mean like side by side by side. And when I say tombs, I don't mean like we dig a grave. I mean, this is really hard rock. So they're, they're built sort of like mausoleums just above the rock, sort of like you would see in say, maybe New Orleans or someplace like that. Um, but there are, I mean, it's just like one after the other after the other and it's all down the side of that, that hill. Um, so I would like to take you there today and let's go for a very steep, walk down the Mount of Olives. So now let's take a few moments for reflection. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.